Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer with another product release close-up video. Sorry to do a few of these in a row, but there have been some great releases lately and I promise to get back to card making tomorrow. Today I'm focusing on the newest release from Simon Says Stamp. This is part of their Stamp Timber event where they do a lot all month long. Now this is a big release, I warn you. This video is longer and I've got to kind of rush through it and not give as many ideas, but really just show you the products because that's really the only way I could fit all the products in this video. So I'm sorry about that, but I'm hoping this is helpful anyways. The first stamp set in this release is Hello Friends. This is done by my friend Susie. I think this is just the most adorable stamp set ever. I think a lot of people would be using this one. It's a smaller set, it's three by four. Lots of fun doodles. I wish I drew better, so I intend to use this stamp set to totally fake it that I can doodle well. What you can do is you can stamp this with a light ink and then trace over it with a pen so that it looks like you did the doodling. I think it'd be fun on a dark colored cardstock and then use colorful gel pens like white and pink gel pens to trace over it. Now I think you could also do a lot of pattern stamping with this and I'll link to a video on pattern stamping that might be helpful. But that hello greeting in there is probably one of my newest favorites. So you'll be seeing me use this stamp set soon. Next we have best hugs. Hugs is my favorite greeting. I've always liked it because it works for many different types of occasions. There's different smaller sentiments that match up with hugs like you give the best hugs, sending love and hugs, um, sending you lots of hugs, lots of things, even missing your hugs. I think that's cute. There's also a lot of things that team up with the word best here. So this is one of those sentiment stamp sets that really gives you a lot of bang for your buck. Lots of ways you can use them and they even have these solid images that you can stamp those sentiments sentiments on top of. Two of my other favorite stamp sets from this release are the jumbo stripes, which are on the left, and the basic stripes on the right. These are great for creating stripe backgrounds or plaid backgrounds, which are really popular. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card, so you can see how long these are in comparison to that. The basic stripes cover the length of the card, but the jumbo stripes you can stamp diagonally across the card and they will fit wonderfully. So if you were to pick between the two, I think the jumbo stripes really has a lot more to offer because of the additional length, the wider stamp that you see there all the way on the left, and the sentiments in there. But of course, since it's a bigger stamp set, it's six by eight, it does have a prior, higher price point. So it just depends on what you wanna do. The stamp set on the right is the normal uh, four by six size stamp set. I really like the sentiments on the jumbo stripes. There are some fun ones in here, including you're pretty awesome. And just because we could always use that prayers and even a little hashtag they can add to some of the sentiments. I really like basic fonts like this because sometimes when you have a lot going on in your card, you just want to add a simple basic sentiment that isn't too busy. These bold stripes would be great for a lot of fun techniques and I'll have a video coming soon to show you how to use these. Like many of you out there, I jump up and down whenever my dear friend Christina Warner creates more sentiments in her beautiful writing. And this stamp set does not disappoint at all. A lot of beautiful holiday sentiments here. These are the kind of greetings that you can stamp and maybe uh, heat emboss with a gold embossing powder or gold glitter embossing powder. And that's really all you need for a simple holiday card. I think these are absolutely beautiful. Christina also designed this adorable stamp set and she was telling me about it when she was creating it and I was so excited to see it. Okay, I'm a big fan of palm trees because I love going to the islands. The little Christmas lights wrapping around are so much fun and I plan to make those with white lights too so I can use uh, this stamp all year round. Then of course we have the adorable Santa. You can put sunglasses on him but the best part, you see that tiny little curly cue? That is hair for Santa's chest. So <laughs> we have a, a hairy chested Santa which I just think is so much fun. You can do that with a light gray. Fun and playful, great for practicing your Copic coloring because these are pretty basic images. Just so much fun. And of course there are coordinating dies available. If you're looking for something a little more graphic, you can go with the Christmas graphic set. My friend Sherry created this. Sherry Carroll was actually the one who taught me how to stamp, what, 15 years ago? Love her dearly. You can layer a lot of these together. So you have the outline tree that you can layer on the solid image, the star on top of the solid star. What I really want to do is stamp three of these outline trees that you see right here, all next to each other. Use a craft knife to cut out the center of the tree on each of them and then create a shaker card behind that. You'll notice a lot a lot of the stamps and dies in this release are great for shaker cards, so you'll hear me mention those examples again and again. 
Now, I don't make many Halloween cards. However, this stamp set is so much fun. I do plan to use this for my son and his friends. I'm going to die cut a window on a card, maybe a square or a circle, and then have these little witch feet hanging down. I thought that would be really fun. You could also have that spider hanging down too. So if you're looking for some quick uh, or Halloween cards, this stamp set would be really good for that. Now we have Oh Happy Day. This is a fun kind of classy stamp set. I really like the My Friend sentiment on the bottom. It's a little bit different. That hello there, I think it'd be fun to stamp and then use a small circle punch to punch that out and you could stick it on a card anywhere. One of those afterthought sentiments. This little sprig is a lot of fun to stamp as a repeating pattern along the back of a card. I also think it would be fun to clear heat emboss those uh, feathers that you see, then put some of the deco foil heat transfer foil on top of it, and then run it through a laminator so that you would have beautiful, smooth gold feathers. And I'll link to a video that shows how to do that. And there is a coordinating die set available also. Now this is a stamp set that I've been wanting for a long time and that is a sports stamp set. In fact, this is a sports planner stamp set. All of the balls on the set are one inch in diameter so you can either die cut them or punch them very quickly, do a lot of fun and simple cards. I plan to use these for my son's friends because they're all sports fanatics, especially baseball. And I like that this covers a lot of different sports in one set. And again, there is a coordinating die set available. Now we have the back to school set. Now, if you know me, I love making cards for teachers and I love making cards for my kids. And this set allows you to do both with one stamp set. There's a lot of school sets out there, but I haven't seen one that is good for both teachers and the kids. I really like the thank you teacher, you are, so, you are classy, I thought that was fun. There's a report card, which I've never seen before in a stamp set, and also the ruler and apple, which I think are fun. You rule kiddo, that's in here. So again, there are stamps in here for teachers and kids. Now for all you cat lovers, there's this adorable cat stamp down here on the bottom and I love the bus at the top. So this one is good if you're looking for a school set that works for teachers and kids. This is a great choice. The coordinating die set is available and by the way, Simon does sell sets where you can buy the stamp set and the die set together if you wanted to or you can buy them separately. Now we have Playful Kittens. I'll admit that I'm starting to sneeze just looking at the stamp set. I'm so allergic to cats, but I really do like having cat sets because a lot of my friends are cat lovers. I really like the sentiments in this one. I know there are a lot of cat stamp sets out there, but these sentiments are fun. You can stamp have a fertastic birthday or have a positively fertastic birthday. A lot of different uh, sentiments that you can kind of build together. I like the little paw prints and the hearts also. Just a fun one for coloring too. You can practice some of your Copic coloring techniques with this one if you're looking to do so. There's one cling stamp set in this release at six by six. This is one of my favorites because it's a leaf background that would be great for techniques. So ink this up quickly with some distress inks, give it a mist with some water and stamp it. It'll look a little messy at first, but when it dries, you have the most beautiful watercolor background. This stamp right here is divine, wonderful for techniques. So you'll be seeing this used a lot and I definitely will be using it. Perfect for the fall season too. Now it's time to dive into the many dies in this release. And I'm going to have to go through these quick because there's a lot. Many of them have the faux stitching on them, which I really like. I think it's a great way to kind of add, add that homemade feel to our cards. This does the stitched pumpkins. It does three different size pumpkins and also a bunch of different leaves. I really like using ink and an ink blending tool to add ink onto these die cuts because those little faux stitch lines kind of grab the ink and they stand out more that way. So this is a great way to really add some depth to it too, is using an ink blending tool. So you can see all the different size pieces here. And the fun part is this die set also has stitching on the outside, on the negative space of the die cut. So you can do some die cut inlay, maybe put the piece back in and you have stitching inside the pumpkin and right around it too. Just a nice finishing touch. I think one of the best dies in this release is the Stitched Grand Maple. This is perfect for shaker cards. So you can see how beautiful the die cut window is and it has the stitching along the outside. So that's great for a shaker window. And you can add some ink along that to kind of make that faux stitching pop out even more. You could also do a fun window card with this and check it out. You could even use it as a stencil. You can see where I put that ink over it. What it leaves behind is kind of pretty. So you can create a stencil from this. 
you can also take the positive leaf and put it back into the negative space and have a fun die cut inlay. I think this is beautiful. It'd be great to put, uh, make a shaker card out of it, put some fall colored um, sequins in the inside and beads, and then put maybe a thanks die cut greeting right across it and you're good to go. I think it'd be just a beautiful card. You could also make tags out of that, uh, that large leaf also. Now we have the stitched leaf wreath. This has a lot of faux stitching on it inside the leaves and on the outside of the leaves. This is what it looks like when it die cuts. You can see the faux stitching around the edge. You could ink up the little leaves and then do some die cut inlay where you just glue them back into place and create a really fun, colorful leaf. I think it'd be fun to die cut all these little leaves out, add some fun watercolor to it, and then inlay them back into place. It'd be really pretty. I also think you could use that wreath, the negative space of the wreath, as a stencil and put embossing paste over it. That'd be beautiful too. Now along the same lines, we have the stitched maple trio. These are faux stitched uh, little leaves. There's three of them here and they're stitching inside the leaves and on the negative space. So you can pop them back in place and have a fun cluster of leaves. I think this would be fun to cover entire background of a card. Now we have the maple leaf corner. This is such a beautiful die. I think these dies kind of get overlooked. When you die cut them, they're absolutely beautiful. So intricate. I just, I, they amaze me. So you can die cut them. You can leave the leaves inside. You can take the leaves out and ink them up and put them back inside. There are just so many things you can do with it. And you can pop all the pieces out and look at that delicate corner piece that you get. You can put it along the corner of the card, or you can put it on two corners of the card. So what I did up here on this green piece is I die cut it in one corner, and then I die cut it in the other corner. And I think it'd be fun to ink up these pieces and put them back in place and stamp a sentiment in the center. Just a beautiful, intricate die. And I really like intricate dies because those are the ones that are most impressive on a final card. Moving on to something completely different, we have the Tattered Poppy. My guess is this was designed by Memory Box. Memory Box does some designs for Simon Says Stamp, and I just think it's beautiful. There are other poppy dies out there. This one is great. It offers a lot of different possibilities, and this is what it looks like when it's assembled, and I just think it's gorgeous. I will link to a video where I used a similar die so you can see an idea of how to use this. Now we have Stitch Daisies. This is another of the best, I think, of all the dies in this release. The intricacy of these die cuts is beautiful. There is the faux stitching on the inside of the petals and along the outside. So you could create a background with these flowers or you can layer them on top of each other. Here's two of the flowers layered on top of each other with the little center in place. There's lots of pierced dots in that little centerpiece. Here it is with three flowers on top of each other. And by the way, you can use little metal um, snip, snips or little wire cutters to cut apart these dies so they can be die cut individually. I just still have them all connected. And you can see that faux stitching on the outside. Absolutely beautiful and perfect for die cut inlay. This die set is the Radiant Sunflower. This is what I wanna do with this one. I don't know, this one seems to need texture to it, I think. So I would die cut this from watercolor paper. I would apply lots of distress ink, green to the stem, yellow to the flower, and brown to the center of the flower. I'd spray it with lots of water and then I would crumble it up. Then I would flatten it back out again. And that gives like a homemade paper feel to it by um, adding the ink, getting it wet and crumbling up and flattening it out. You get like a homemade paper look. And I thought that would be beautiful with this. Or you could die cut it from fabric. I think that'd be nice too. Now we have the Congratulations Circle Die. It has this fun little house in the center. And then there's also the, a ring with the word congratulations going around it. This is great, of course, for shaker cards. But what I think this would be fun for is congratulations for other things, not just for a house. You could put a baby image in the center there for a baby card, or you can put like a graduation hat in the center for a graduation card. There are a lot of times when I need congratulations for different things, and you can just use this little image, this die cut image, and put anything you want in the center. Now we have the large party circle. This one is so much fun. Of course, this screams shaker card. So all you have to do is maybe uh, silver heat emboss this entire piece so it's nice and shiny silver. Create a shaker window behind it. Add lots of fun things in it and you have the perfect party window card. Another thing I think would be fun is to just hang this party tag or this little circle on the front of a gift bag. So you can just hang it on a present just for something fun. I think it's just so delicate and adorable. I think it'd be fun to kind of spice up a present. 
Along the same lines is the happy birthday circle. This is so detailed and beautiful. Christina designed this one, so it's great um, handwriting here. This again would be great for a shaker card or a window card. And I believe Christina has a card coming up on her blog soon showing how to make a shaker card out of this. She showed it to me and it's a great card. This is a beautiful intricate die and you could even cut the words out so it's not inside the circle if you wanted to. Then we have a much smaller die. This is the best circle, and this would go nicely with the sentiments in that hugs and best set that I showed you at the beginning of this video. That seems so long ago. This is a long video. Sorry about that. Now we have the birthday frame. The fun thing about this set is that it creates the frame that says birthday, but it also die cuts the word boy and the word girl so that you can put that right below the word birthday. By the way, you can, of course, use little wire cutters or snips to cut the words boy and girl, those dies, apart so that all three of these are separate. So all the dies that you see here are still connected, but they can be cut apart. This would be so much fun to put a child's picture in that frame. Kids love getting cards with their own pictures on it. Now, big hugs, scripty big hugs. I, again, use the word hugs on cards all the time because it works for so many different occasions. And this big hugs is perfect. It's a nice size. You could use hugs by itself if you wanted to also. This is one of those dies you, that I will have a permanent home for right on my table because I'll be using it so much. Now we have the circle loops. These would be fun to die cut from a few different colors and kind of layer up on a card behind a little image. I also think you could die cut it from various shades of the same color, maybe different shades of pink, and layer on top of each other to form a fun flower. You could also cut these up. Remember, you can change up dies by, or die cuts by cutting them up. So I'm just gonna cut this apart. You'll see I end up with a fun little moon outline. But what I'm actually going to do is kind of trim them up and pull them a little bit tighter together and we have an outline of a leaf that would go great with the circle flowers that I had mentioned that you could create from these. So try to think outside of the box on how you can kind of extend the life of any dies that you may have. Along the same lines, they also came out with some square frames. Again, this would be great to just take a simple stamped image, put it inside that little square. You could do die cut inlay if you wanted to. If you really wanted to, you could also use this for little shaker windows on a card. Just this is fun for just kind of giving a little something extra to a simple small image. Now sometimes a die comes along and is all you need to put on a card, and this is it. The sketch gift, I love how this die cuts. Look how intricate that is, absolutely so much fun. So you could die cut this from glitter paper, stick it on a card, stamp happy birthday under it, and you'll have a beautiful, simple, elegant card. This one I think would be great on little gift tags also. You could use it for birthdays, you could use it for holidays. Now there are the alphabet blocks and the number blocks. These are really fun because you can use them in many ways. You can leave them set in like you see there. You can cut around the outside of the block so you can have a completely different look or you can cut the letter itself out. So you've got the positive and the negatives for all of these pieces. Really fun and I like that the alphabet set comes with the little exclamation points and all the punctuation too. I heard uh, Heidi over at Simon Says Stamp mention that the stitched ovals were created because many people asked for them. You can see I left them all connected and die cut them all at once, so I ended up with a lot of stitched frames. But you can, of course, cut all of these out so that you can just have one individual oval die cut at once. And there is faux stitching on both sides of the cut line for this. Ovals are always fun. It's something that I always forget to reach for, so I'll definitely be using these. They fit nicely on the front of a note card. This next one is the Drifting Stitched Circles. This is one that'd be fun for a very modern, colorful card. Love to die cut this from white on the front of a card and add some color behind it, maybe some rainbow watercolor, or you can do a little shaker behind it if you want to, and then just do a die cut sentiment right across it. Faux stitching, of course, that goes straight across the card and then around each of the circles. Now snowflake die cuts or dies, there seem to be a lot of these out there, but these are two of my favorite because I love how intricate they are and how different they are. They're very modern. Die cut these from some glitter paper or even from some foil paper and you'll have some beautiful accents. These would be great on holiday cards that you mass produce. Then we have the Merry Christmas orna ornament. Talk about intricate. There's so much to this. You could turn this into a beautiful shaker card or even a little shaker ornament. You could also die cut it and just cut the words Merry Christmas out and use those alone. 
Or you can die, die cut it, cut the words Merry Christmas, take them out, and then put some other sentiment in the inside. You could even put a photo behind it if you wanted to. I think it'd be fun to make this as like a window that you kind of see through on the front of a card, then have a family photo on the inside. I love doing photo cards for the holidays. Then we have the small chevron stripes. This, I, I still love chevrons. My daughter's room has chevrons in them. I think they're so much fun. I love the little zigzags this cuts. Then you can also use the negative space and have some fun color showing through it. I also think it'd be fun to die cut this border repeatedly to cover the entire background of a card and do like a tone on tone, just white on white. We now have this stitched envelope. This is the cutest little envelope. It does have the faux stitching around it. All you have to do is score along the lines, put a little adhesive on the little flaps, fold it up, and there we have the cutest little envelope. I think it'd be fun to put a little love note in there, and I plan to throw a few of these in my kids' lunches every once in a while. And last but definitely not least is the snowflake block. This is another beautiful intricate die that would be perfect for a shaker card. It screams shaker card. Or you could create a window on the front of a holiday card and have the family photo show through behind like I mentioned before. Or you could use foil on this. There's many things you could use this for and I definitely will be using it in future videos. Now I think I should also mention that there were a lot of hybrid inks released in this collection and some note cards and even a stencil. I left those out of this video because this video was long enough, but I have more information over on my blog. Now all the products I talk about and the videos I talked about are linked in the YouTube description below and again over my blog. I really hope that this video is helpful so that you could get a closer look at each of the products. I appreciate you sticking through the long video and I hope to see you again soon.